Thank you. Thanks, Felicia. Welcome, everyone. I am so excited about today. Um, my name is Cindy with the Wood and Wick Co. This is our first class for Michaels. It is not my first class ever. I uh, do a lot of company corporate events, um, as well as other um, family events and things for people's personal lives. Uh, but this is my first time with Michaels and I'm so thankful for Michaels. Um, and I'm thankful that you took the time today to come to my first class. So thank you guys so much. Um, if you've never heard of the Wooden Wick Co., we are a luxury supplier for do-it-yourselfers around the globe. We have all natural and sustainable supplies, which makes us very different than a lot of other things that you may see online. Um, we care about the environment and being eco-friendly first and foremost in everything that we do. Um, so today, everybody is here to make a candle. And I can, I can sort of occasionally look at the chat. When I ask you a question, I'm gonna look at the chat, but other than that, um, I have someone else from our company monitoring the chat and can answer questions for you. Um, but I do wanna ask if everyone can put, if this is your first time ever making a candle, put yes in the chat box, just so I can see what my audience is like. If it's the first time, okay, awesome, fantastic. Okay, great. We got a lot of newbies and that's fantastic. That's what we wanted. Um, again, my name is Cindy. I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I live in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. I see I have a lot of um, East uh, Coast people on as, as well it, from Georgia. I don't see anyone in Tennessee though. Um, but if you've ever been to Tennessee, it's absolutely gorgeous here. The Smoky Mountains are really, really amazing if you've never been here before. I live in Dolly Parton's hometown. I'm sure you've heard of her. Um, she is a spectacular woman. She does so much for this area. Um, hats off to Dolly, love her. Um, I have two children, um, adult children. One is still in college and one is out. Um, and I have a family of five golden retrievers. Today, I don't have any in the room. I didn't want any distractions for you. Um, so that's good news, but I am a furry baby freak. Um, I love all animals, especially dogs, but I love all animals. I love everything from donkeys to pigs to goats. I love them all. Um, so um, that's a little bit about me. I also am a certified candle holic. I love candles and that's why I do what I do. Um, prior to working here, I've always loved candles. I will have five lit at once at any one time in my house. I just love the ambiance that it gives to me and also the smells. So I have my favorites that I'm, you know, do certain times a year. I put on one versus the other, um, things like that. So, oh, yay, we got an East Tennessee person, Emma. Awesome. Okay, so um, what we're, we're talking about candles here. As you and I both know, candles are such a huge part of today's world and society. Think about it. And feel free to write in the chat box if I come up with something and you and I didn't that I didn't think of. Think of all the ways candles are used today. We have celebrations, right? Um, aroma, just for the fragrance of it. Decor. I mean, you can't go into any retailer without tons of options, right? Um, rituals and like traditions, remembrance of people. Um, let's see if anyone had any other ideas. Light. Good one. Jill. Very good one. Um, and romance. I mean, and I'm going to throw this one at you. I use it for self-care. Um, I bet there's people on this call who also do that. Um, maybe the after a long, tough day, you're in the bath or just relaxing by candlelight, by fire, whatever. Um, candles are just so soothing and there's scientific evidence behind all of that. So it's not random. Um, yeah, theme parties, Gracie, yeah. Um, hurricane blackouts. Yes, I am originally from Florida. I have been in a hurricane. So it does come in handy for that. Um, so uh, thank you for adding to those. Those helped me out a lot. So we all obviously love candles and you could always give a gift as a candle and they're always going to love it. I mean, is that, am I right or am I right? <laughs> right. I've never been disappointed my entire life by getting a candle as a gift. Have you? 
Um, <laughs> right. So um, today I wanted to tell you a little bit about candle making. So I, I, want, I did leave out a little bit about myself. I am a teacher, spent 20 years teaching online classes. Um, so you will catch me educating you along the way about different candle terms. I just like to do it. I think it's fun to be like a little bit knowledgeable um, when you're around friends. At least you have like a little bit of knowledge you could throw out there sometimes. That's what I like. So I'll throw it in there, whether you use it ever or not, it doesn't matter. But some people might enjoy having a little bit of background knowledge about um, candles. So it won't be just the actual making of a candle. And there's a lot of people on this call as well that don't have the kit yet, perfectly fine. I'll still go over every component and, um, and then you can determine if you wanna buy a kit after the class or continue with candle making as a hobby, as a gift. With Christmas coming, it makes the best gift. I was thinking, excuse me, um, because not only are you giving a candle, but if you make the candle yourself, it's so much more meaningful, in my opinion. Um, my mother is visiting from Florida. She made me a blanket. I can make a blanket myself. I could also buy like 50 blankets. It's just not the same. When someone gives you that gift, it's special that they took the time to make it for you. So I encourage you, um, my platform in life is all about paying it forward. Um, so I encourage you in any way possible, whether through a candle or some other way, always to think about how can I pay it forward? Okay. So with that said, I want to tell you a little bit about crafting and candle making. Probably most people on this call have done crafting of some sort, whether it's scrapbooking, soap making, um, painting, yarn, macrame, you, we all know all the different crafts that you can do. So um, there are studies that show that using your hands is a natural stress reliever. Does, has anyone ever heard that before? That the act of using your hands to create, whether it is anything with your hands, it could be gardening, it could be cooking, using your hands creates a natural stress reliever. Has anyone heard that before? Hi, Jennifer from California. All right. Okay, awesome. So yes. So if you've ever made anything with your hands, if you think about it, while you're doing your creation, you are probably at your most relaxed you've ever been. I know prior to making candles, I was into scrapbooking. And I know that when my kids were young and I was scrapbooking, when I was focusing on just doing the lettering and the stickers and the cutting and the creating, I was so focused on that that I didn't care what my kids were really doing at that moment. I don't care what my job was. I don't care what I was eating for dinner that night. I was so engrossed in that activity that it was like instant therapy. Um, well, it's the same now for me for candle making. I've kind of just gotten really into candles and soaps. By the way, if you come to like this class, me and the kit, I am doing a soap making class for Michaels on November 30th. Um, so you can find that information on Michaels as well. So um, I just didn't want to forget that. Um, so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to dive into the actual kit that you would have if you had purchased it today. But it'll still give you a general idea, even though you don't have it in your hands, of how simple it is to create the most amazing smelling candle. And we'll go over like each individual component and why it might be different than other components out there um, as well. So this is the most gorgeous packaging. And I say that because I truly believe it. Um, I feel like this is just such a stunning chic gift to give someone. Um, personally, a true story, since my job is completely to teach kit classes, we have soap, um, diffusers, body spray, perfume, sanitizers, um, all sorts of classes, and they all come in these kits. Well, this box is too beautiful, plus it's recyclable and sustainable. Um, so I just wasn't going to throw it in the garbage. Like, I just couldn't do it. So they would stack up in my office. And my husband was like, what are you going to do with all those boxes? Like, it was getting, like, I had a whole wall full. And I was trying to think, what am I going to do with it? Um, could not come up with anything. Finally, I came up with an idea. 
I am going to reuse these boxes and I refill them with things from the dollar store and some of the items in here. And I bring it to nursing homes locally where I live as a surprise, just for someone who maybe doesn't get a lot of visitors or even if they do, things that they need. So it has like socks, um, shampoo, conditioner, cards, paper, pen, just little things, candy, treats, um, and refill it. So I'm reusing the boxes, you know, and making myself happy that I'm not um, just throwing these beautiful boxes away. And the receiver on the other end is having so much joy. So it's like winning, winning, winning. Um, so getting back to this, I told you, I do have a platform. My platform is pay, paying it forward. And I'm, I just can't not take the opportunity to share those stories with you. Um, so the next um, thing you'll have in the box is these wood fibers, which are also biodegradable and recyclable. I use that as well when I am redoing the box. Your kit comes with a little package here, which we'll open in a minute. Um, this has all the components, the fragrance, the wood wick, the clip, stickers, the bamboo stirrer. This comes in here. If there is anyone on the call that does have a kit, please let me know. Um, that way I know that at least somebody um, is doing it with me. Otherwise, I just assume that I'm demoing it, but no one's really going along with me. So if anyone is, feel free to let me know so I know um, helping someone out there. Okay. so. The next thing we're doing, we are making two candles today. Um, this kit is called Fabulous Fig. Um, and actually, um, this kit is Fabulous Fig. And I forget the other part of it. Um, but we are going to make this beautiful. Uh, you can make one kit. Um, you can order with one candle or two. Um, so this one here that we're doing is a two kit. Look at this amazing copper. We call them vessels. It's an aura vessel. Uh, it is absolutely stunning. A lot of people also call this rose gold. Um, I absolutely love this um, so much. And this one is very holiday, I feel like. Um, and so is the fragrance that comes with it. Um, so that's the first one we're gonna do. Um, the next thing I'm going to take out, and again, this is recyclable, so you can either make another candle in it, or you can use it like I have it by my sink in the kitchen. I have my little yellow squeegee thing for dishes and the Brillo pad. Um, I also have it in the guest room with some like small flowers. You could do so much with these. And we also on our website always have ways to recycle everything. Like I told you, being eco-friendly is our number one um, important rule for us. Um, then we're gonna take out the wax. This wax is amazing. Um, it is nature's wax. It is a combination of coconut, soy and palm wax. Everything in this kit is pre-measured, which makes it super simple. Um, whereas if you ever, ever talk to a candle maker, it, things don't come pre-measured. You have, there's an art and science to making candles. We can talk about that as we go along. But for our purposes, what's so great as a beginner is that this teaches you like, hey, I can make a candle, um, what's entailed in it. Um, so I think this is an awesome place to start. Um, so the first thing I do want to let you know is that the wax is the wax is vegan. It's also 100% natural and sustainable. The first thing I'm going to do is take off this lid because we are going to be putting this in the microwave for three minutes, and I don't want a fire hazard today. So I'm going to take off the lid. That way I know I'm not going to cause any firemen to show up at my house. Not going to lie, I've had that happen before, not for candles, but for other things. Um, so today we're gonna stay away from the firemen. All right, so we're gonna do that. Now we'll get back to our kit. Okay, and it seems that nobody said yet. <laughs> Gracie, I have stories for you. I have had firemen show up at the house more than one occasion. Okay. Um, so you're going to have um, a bamboo stirrer. This is so cute. You can use it for honey too. Then 
It has two fragrances. This is Fig Leaf and Gabonium. Um, this also want, the second one is Kakadu Plum and Amber. It's amazing. I'll, I'll, I'll open them in a minute and tell you about the notes and stuff involved. Um, but right now I'm just showing you the components. These might look like, who cares? They're National Candle Association stickers. But let me tell you why it matters. Before I started working here, and like I told you, I would have five candles running at once all the time, all day long. Um, and I just can go through them like that. And um, I learned from here that you're not supposed to burn a candle for more than four hours. Who knew? I didn't. Now I know. You have to shut it off, start a new one. It's a fire hazard. Second thing I didn't know that's on here is you have to trim your wick between burns. Now today, this comes pre-cut, so we don't have to trim it to start. But after we burn it, the next time we would have to trim it. How do you trim it? Simple, either use your fingers and just when it's cool, pinch off the top, or they make tools called wick trimmers. They're cheap, you could cut that off, or you could use nail clippers. But even if you have a cotton wick, it doesn't matter what wick you're using, always cut the wick between burns. Um, you will notice now that I told you about it, that there is a, when, a big black carbon buildup on the edge, if you don't. And that's what, I know this has happened to you because it's happened to me a million times. When you go and you light your candle, you have to go jump back because it sparks out at you. Yeah, you won't get that if you cut your candle and trim it. So the first thing we're gonna do is take your sticker, and we're gonna put it at the bottom of the vessel, right in the center. Just a reminder, it also says things like, um, don't have your pets near your candles and obviously don't leave your candle unattended um, and not have a breeze or a fan going. Uh, those are common sense, I get that. Um, but the other two, I had no idea. Um, so hopefully I've shared a little bit with you as well. And you would want to trim your wick, whether it's cotton or um, wood, which we're going to go over today, um, about a quarter of an inch is what you want to trim. Okay, next, you have the wood wick. I would like to see who on the call has ever seen a wood wick or used a wood wick, like you've seen it in a candle you bought or that someone gave you. Yes, yay. All right, so everyone knows pretty much. Yes, exactly. They're one of a kind when, I mean, we do have a hundred patents on this. We are the originator of the wood wick. Um, very proud of that. And not only because it's amazing and it crackles and the um, wick starts dancing. Um, it is just the coolest thing. Obviously, you all know that um, who have ha had this experience. You can't get that with a cotton wick. Okay, aesthetically, it looks beautiful. Here's an example of one that's done. It looks prettier than a cotton string hanging out. Um, most people would agree with me on that. Um, but more importantly, um, it is, it crackles, it um, emits the fragrance 35% faster than a cotton wick. We've done the studies on this. So why do people want a candle that emits fragrance? Obviously, the whole reason we buy candles is a lot for the smell and the odor and the aroma of them. So we want it to fill the room and diffuse as fast as possible. So the wood wick gives you that capability um, where you don't get that as much in the other cotton wicks. In addition, the wood wick is made in the USA. It is sourced um, from sappy fruit trees um, and they are in a forest. This matters to me, okay? It, it's in a forest where we are. We get this wood um, from and it's, better, it's protected by uh, the certification forestry division. And what that means to me and you is that there's gonna be more trees growing and we're gonna protect the forests and the wildlife that lives there. So that matters for me, for future generations, my kids, kids and so forth, that I want the trees to continue and we make sure that it does. And so that, that matters to me. Um, so you have here um, the most eco-friendly 
um, wick. It's beautiful. It crackles. It emits faster. Um, and it's really the, the best choice if you care about the environment. Um, so that's a wood wick. Um, the next thing we have is this metal clip. And I'm going to put on a little song. And I want to see in the chat box if you can guess the name of the song and who sings it. And I'll, you'll understand why in a minute. Okay. Hold on. I'm waiting for everyone. Who knows the song? I know someone does. Yeah. Yay! Good job. So the reason I put that song on for this part is because to get the wood wick in um, perfectly, me personally, you have to gently rock the casbah. You have to gently rock the wick into the like this. This is what I do. I like kind of move my body and give it some pressure just like that. You don't have to, but I like to, plus I like to dance. Um, so it's going to look like this and it should stick up vertically. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to do is take the little circle sticker that comes in the kit and we're going to put it on the bottom like this and peel off. Okay, so this is your wick. So what do we do with the wick? We want it in the center of our vessel, right? We want it to be in the center. Candle makers really have a hard time with this. I'm not gonna lie. It's actually harder than you think if you wanna be really specific and perfectionistic. Luckily, I'm not. I've had many candles look like this, tilted over, they smelled right. Um, I'm not perfect. I just gonna do the best I can. And nine times out of 10, it's close enough. So you just eyeball it, look in the center and boom, it's in just like that. All right, so simple. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the handy dandy pre-measured wax and I'm gonna put it in the microwave. You are gonna always need handy dandy pot holders because the wax gets super duper hot. Um, again, I don't want to have to go to urgent care. So I'm gonna use my um, pot holders and I'm gonna put it in for three minutes. Some people's microwaves are a little longer. Some people are a little less. Um, it's just a variation, but while it's, while it's uh, melting away. Let's talk a little bit about one thing I brought up is when we talked about candles, we talked about why people use candles, right? We came up with that long list, but health is a really important benefit to a candle. Um, how is a candle healthy at all? Well, the scientific background of aromatherapy um, tells us that certain scents emit certain moods and can change your brain chemistry, it lowers your cortisol level, at which actually increases your mood and makes you happier. That's why different scents they use for different things, right? We all probably know like lavender, if you're having trouble sleeping, you want to really rest and they say, smell lavender or put it on, spray it on your pillow, right? Um, when my kids were taking the ACT, their guidance counselor said, give them peppermint before. Peppermint increases their focus. Who knew? Yes, studies show that. Um, so you you know you could use candles to increase focus. Um, there's candle scents that decrease anxiety and depression, um, like apple scents. Um, even woodsy scents actually can be helpful for that. Um, all there's a whole science behind different scents. The interesting thing too to me is that. What I smell and what you smell are totally different, even if we're smelling the exact same fragrance. Um, our olfactory system is completely different. Um, and now with COVID, some of us don't even have smell. 
But anyway, back to this. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about these fragrances that come in this awesome kit. Um, so first, I want to let you know why use wooden wicks fragrance. There's, oh my God, is this never gets old. I am sorry. I am, in addition to being a candleholic, I'm also a fragrant freak. Um, oh my God, I'm in love. This is Kakadu and Amber, and it has like fruity, fresh, guava, hints of coconut, and hints of amber, and it is unbelievable. But what makes it even more unbelievable is that it is a pure formulation. What does that mean? Why do I care? You care. You want your pet safe. You want your kids safe. You want people when they come into your house safe, okay? If you're using a fragrance that has um, cancer-causing agents, um, you should be concerned. Um, these are awesome because they're pure formulation. Not only are they sophisticated in the level of scent, um, complexity that we use for our fragrances, but most importantly, it is free of parabens, free of um, phthalates, free of Prop 65 ingredients. It is vegan, it is toxic free, it is um, as clean as you can get a fragrance, this is it. Um, so true story, let me tell you, one minute while I get my wax out here. Um, true story. I was doing a class for Amazon. Um, and no, they didn't pay me to plug that. Um, anyway, your wax should look like this when you take it out. Okay. Okay. Fully melted. Um, and I was doing a class and it was online like you all are. And it was about 25 people in the room and there was a man and he had a six-year-old son on his lap. And he was doing the kit that's called Coffee Addict. It's amazing, it has this Java scent that it's just died for. Anyway, um, so we're at this port point right here where everyone's like, okay, everyone, smell your fragrance that you're gonna use and let's talk about what notes you have. I'll discuss that in a minute. And the, the man said, oh, wow, this smells amazing. And then he went to his son, hey, do you wanna smell it? Yes, the six-year-old wanted to smell it. Not only did he want to smell it, but he wanted to eat it. He tasted it with his tongue. He went, Hup! and then proceeded to scream and cry. This was like my second class ever. I was not trained for this. Um, so he was like, ma'am, ma'am, what do I do? What do I do? I'm like, the only thing I knew is that our fragrances were toxic free and I knew that everything was gonna be okay. I didn't know exactly what to tell him. I said, get a washcloth on my mom, get a washcloth with water, put it on and he'll be okay. Turns out everything was absolutely fine. Moral of the story is they're clean and free and delicious but you don't need to eat them, okay? Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to pour in our fragrance we're gonna use the entire bottle, okay? And we take our bamboo stirrer, which is so fun. It also like doubles as a drum when you're on the phone and you're like annoyed or something, it's so much fun. Anyway, um, then you're gonna stir it for two minutes. You can all use this, but you know, if you were at home, you can use your watch or your phone. Now, this is the most important part about candle making. And I'm gonna explain why. So when you melt the wax, what you're doing is you're changing the chemistry of the wax and you are making the molecules become porous. So they open up, which we want them to do, and the fragrance that we just put in attaches, we want it to attach to the wax molecule. Okay, now they need to blend super duper duper good. I mean, they need to just love each other in this jar, okay? So we're gonna stir for two minutes while they join together and get a nice good stir. Why does this matter? It matters, fragrance matters. Um, it matters because I'm look, gonna look at the screen now. Who has ever bought a candle? You enjoyed it for the first 15 minutes. You're like, oh my God, this is so good. And then you can't smell it anymore. Looking at the screen, has anyone ever had a dud candle like that? Exactly, Patty. Exactly, Gracie. 
it is annoying. You just spent $25 on this most amazing candle from Home Goods or Michaels or whatever. And unfortunately, the candle maker did not have a good enough stir here and they didn't measure maybe the wax proportion to the fragrance and you have to stir it at the right amount of temperature too it's a complete science we're making it look really simple but there is a science to this and an art so um in order for there's th there's three notes in fragrances okay you picture a um triangle at the top, you have your top note. It's like this little, okay? Then you have a middle section of the triangle. That's the middle um, notes or the heart notes, it's also called. Then you have the bottom level, which is called the base notes. Um, in order to get, and we're about done here with the two minutes, in order to get beyond the top note, that top note that you went and you smelled 50 different fragrances, um, candles in a store, um, that top note, you're only going to smell for 15 minutes. That's all the top note is, 15 minutes, okay? If you don't have these other notes mixed in correctly, you won't have any aroma, um, which is really a big bummer when you spent a lot of money. Um, so that's why when you're making candles, you want to make sure you get a good, solid union between the wax and the fragrance at the right temperature. Then we're going to pour in the side of the candle. You don't want to pour, do not pour it over the, this, the, um, the wood wick. It will um, not allow your candle to burn properly. So you want to just pour the wax with the handy dandy pot holders on the, in the, just on the edge there like that. And it smells so good. I wish you guys had it with you. It's amazing. I'm smelling this. Um, Ta-da! Um, you leave about a quarter of an inch like I showed you in the pink candle and I'll show you my other beautiful candle, this gorgeous gold one. Um, you want to leave out a little quarter of an inch of wick. So if you were making your candle with me, you would be done and you made your first candle. Um, it is super fun. A few, there's so much more I could share and tell you, but I don't want to overwhelm you in your first class. But um, it is such a beautiful experience that when I, now I'm, I have to wait, I have to wait 72 hours before I can burn this candle. Candle makers, believe it or not, actually wait two weeks before, um, and they allow their candles to cure before burning it or selling it. This candle, Everything's been tested. That's the beauty of our kit. Everything's gonna work properly. Everything, the right amount of wax with the right wick, with the right jar, with the right amount of fragrance, everything's been tested for you. So it's just a beautiful first experience. Um, so we are gonna move on and do a second candle. Um, and I'm just looking to see, um, in case you're not reading um, the chat, um, someone is talking about cold throw versus hot throw. And I think that's a great thing to talk about. So cold throw is this. You're in your house right now. You have nothing lit and you go to your solid wax candle and you go, oh my God, that one is really good. Um, this is like uh, patchouli and mm, so good, juniper. Um, anyway, so that's a cold throw. How your candle smells at solid state, okay? A hot throw is when you burn it and it's lit. Again, it all, why does that matter? It matters because uh, if you did not stir it properly, you won't get on your hot throw, you're only gonna get that first top note that you smelled in the store. You're only gonna get it 15 minutes of enjoyment and then you're not gonna have good scent for the middle and the base notes, which are the remainder of the candle, which could be, you know, 36 hours or whatever. So that is why it's important to know um, about fragrances and, and cold throw and hot throw and all the fun terminology. Um, again, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, I will be um, making a second candle for anybody that would like to see another one made. Um, 
and we'll continue to talk about self-care and candles. So does is anyone like me and use candles for self-care? What I do, if I'm having one of those days and we all know we have them, I will take a very, very scorchy hot bath and I like it filled up really high. And, and then I will put candles all around. Not gonna lie, I might have a cocktail or a glass of red wine. Um, but that's how I just like to relax with candles. Anyone else want to share what they do to relax with candles? Might be different than mine. Oh, yeah, definitely bubbles. Yes, um, that's awesome. Okay, so now we are making, oh, yep, yeah, I do too, Carly. That's where I have them all around my bathtub. Again, in my world, there's no such thing as too many candles. Um, and pr probably for a lot of you guys sitting on the phone, you're like, heck yeah, I agree. Um, so let's talk about self-care. 80% of Americans right now are searching for self-care. Obviously, we've just been through a pandemic. We're still in it. Life is different. And they're like, okay, I just need some me time. Like, hold on, right? So what is self-care? Um, it doesn't mean you have to go to a spa and spend thousands of dollars or, you know, pampering yourself. That is not necessarily what self-care is. Self-care is just taking care of yourself mentally and physically. Um, it's just honestly necessary for survival. It's not like a gift. It is an actual necessity of survival to take care of yourself. Okay. Um, why? because most of us on this call take care of other people. That's probably what we do. Just speaking for the vast majority of people that I know in my world, and we take care of other people. So in order to refill ourselves, we have to take care of ourselves. Otherwise we have nothing left to give anyone else. And we can get really tired and angry and when we're not taking care of ourselves. So if you want to, be alive and be able to give and give of yourself and help other people like I do, you do have to make self-care a priority for yourself. And it's not selfish. Whoever came up with the idea that self-care is selfish, forget that idea. That is not true whatsoever. It is a necessity. So I hope there's a bunch of women on this call, even men, who are going to practice self-care tonight. Um, one of the things, like I said earlier, Self-care to me is also doing my hobby because when I'm doing my hobby of making candles or making soap or diffusers, I am so all in, like I'm not doing anything else but focusing, using my hands, smelling aromas. Sometimes I put on music, I love music and I'm just having a great time. Um, and I'm focusing on myself, that's self-care. I didn't have to spend a million dollars at the spa. I was in my house making my own candle. Do you see how that is? So it's it's never too late to start a hobby. Trust me when I say I am old as dirt, okay? Might not look it, but I am old as dirt. And it is not too late to stop, start a hobby, okay? So, um, and I'm sure Michael's has so many options for you there. I mean, I could spend hours there. I'm sure you guys do too. So the next thing we're gonna do is again, we're going to take the wood wick. We are going to rock it gently. Rock, 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 rock. Rock it into the wood clip, the metal clip like this. Literally, if you wanted to, you probably can make a candle this if you wanted to, probably in 10 minutes. Um, but I don't like to rush it because for me, this is fun. And I like to make sure I do everything properly and there is no rush, right? I'm having fun, I'm taking care of myself. Um, so we did that and then I get the little sticker and feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. I know that's crazy, but I just love making things. So this is super fun to me. Um, Feel free to let me know if you're having as much fun as I am. All right, so we take the sticker on the bottom. Again, eyeball it. While I'm talking to you, so have you ever seen a candle maker use a cotton 
wick. They have to like use this thing and like set it up with this crossbar to make it stand up straight. Oh my gosh, I do not have the patience for that. This is just easy. Sticker, boom, done. I do everything fast. You can ask my family. Um, so this works for me. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is get out the wax. Um, All right, and again, we're gonna take off the handy dandy lid. Um, we'll use it as a poster for the bamboo stir. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys something else. This is super cool. So like I told you earlier, everything is eco-friendly, sustainable and recyclable. So, so are these awesome mason jars, okay? You and I both know if you live in the South, there is nothing like a mason jar. I mean, the things that you can do with a mason jar, holy, holy. Um, so it only takes hot water to get the remaining wax out, boom. Peel off the sticker. Again, when I do the nursing home kits, I um, just refill this with candy um, or pretzels, you know, whatever I decide to buy that day. Um, but I also, since I make so many kits in my pantry, I have coffee beans, rice, two different kinds of rice, um, beans, and I and it makes for nice organization. If you're a teacher, the, the things that you can do with these. Also on our website, we have a list of about 50 things you how to recycle a mason jar. So, um, and also I use a ton of them for um, fresh cut flowers um, in the summer. Wish I had some flowers right now. I love flowers. Also love gardening. Gardening, using your hands, again, stress relief. It is just amazing. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this again in the microwave. So, hey, someone out there I'm sure is wondering, hey, I don't have a microwave. Believe it or not, not everyone has a microwave. Um, and that's completely okay. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use a double boiler, no biggie, um, get a pot, put water in it, and another pot with the jar on top. It takes a little longer obviously than the microwave, but it works. Also seeing people just take the jar directly into the pot of water, that also works. Again, it takes a little longer, won't be three minutes, but it will work. Um, so you can always do that. All right, so that is um, uh, melting. And another you know, thing I wanted to touch base upon is um, with the health benefits, getting back to the health benefits of, um, of fragrances, again, it will it will change your mood. It'll completely transform your space. I've done this as an experiment. When I want to change moods, if you put a different scent candle in a different area of your house and you walk from one room to the other, you will change modes. Different scents really emit and change your mood, um, which I think is like the most amazing thing. Um, aside from the fact that I love the crackle, um, during the pandemic, my husband and I had to share an office space. That was a joy. Um, anyway, um, so I always had my wood wick candle burning and that white noise just became ingrained in our heads as we were working. And it, we, he, a man in particular looked when it wasn't lit, he would go, you forgot to light the candle. Um, because we got so used to that crackling. It's like this beautiful, calming white noise. It's like a little mini fireplace. And this is the best time of year. And if you do it in your house, I guarantee you will get so many compliments and people asking you where you got that candle. Today, I got an email from someone who said, I burnt all my candles that we did. What, what scent did you give me? I need another one. Like, it is amazing. Um, so we are gonna, um, so just keep in mind that it's not, you're not wasting money. When you buy a candle or make a candle, you are helping yourself or you're giving it as a gift and you're giving, you're giving away peace and joy and that just serenity. And, and again, it is a, you could look at the scientific studies. It is scientifically proven that candles are calming and soothing. Um, 
Again, they still um, you know, give light and all other things as well. But most of all, it is just so calming for your soul and your well-being. So highly recommend treat yourself um, to that. And, and it's more fun to me now to make it. Um, it's just so much fun. Um, okay, so I'm going to take out my wax. And we got that. And I'm going to mix my next fragrance, which is Fig Leaf and the Volume. Now that fragrance is super yummy. Um, it is like, has a little bit of woodsiness into it, kind of like a base of cedar. Um, kind of reminds me of like going on a hike because I live in the Smokies and it's kind of high, it's like a fresh, it's hard to describe, but it's a very fresh, smoky kind of flavor. It's just, I'm, I just love it. Um, anyway. I make this candle a lot um, and it's really nice for the holidays as well. Oh yeah, you need to get this. This is your new BFF, meet it. It is so good. Okay, um, so I'm gonna pour it all in. Okay. Again, we are doing the two minute stir. Oh, all right. Oh yeah, I am with you. Good point. It is so romantic. It can be. Um, it depends if you're in your office working or if you have it like next to your bath or something or in your bedroom. But yes, I agree with you. Candles are super romantic. Um, especially if you get a really good scent. You know, my daughter loves this scent. It's called dark rose and labdanum and it's a very sexy manly scent like woodsy sex i can't even describe this deliciousness that it is um but yeah that one's super romantic um and it is in one of our kits as well um i think it's a date night kit perfect right um so even men love candles i'm not joking i've tested it out um okay um, you could use the same stirrer. Good question, Patty. And some of my friends, when they come over, they see that I have all these stirrers and they try to steal them. They're like, oh my God, those are so cute. I've been looking for one. I'm like, okay, they are cute. <laughs> um, okay, it comes in the kit. The stirrer comes in the kit. Um, and again, you could just, Easily rinse it off and use it for honey if you're done making candles. All right. So I'm giving it a really good stir. A lot of people actually find this part very zenful um, because they're just focusing on the stirring and the smell and the aroma. And you're just like really, like if I wasn't doing this class, I would just be like looking down and just like really kind of, it's like a monotonous stir and it just kind of mesmerizes you. Um, it's kind of very zenful. Okay, my two minutes are up. I'm gonna put it in here. And must use these. It, this is super hot, honestly. Um, so you don't wanna not have pot holders handy. And then I'm pouring it in. I'm gonna leave a quarter of an inch at the top. And then don't forget, you can't burn your candle for 72 hours. Ta-da, 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 ta-da. It never gets old. Um, and when you do make your candles, you wanna leave it in place where it's at. Don't move it for 12 hours. If you absolutely have to leave it there at least an hour and a half so it starts, you'll see at the top that it'll start curing but you really want to make sure you can leave it as long as possible in the spot where you're making it. Um, so you have the best chance of all of the notes combining adequately and you getting the best throw into the room when you light your candle. Um, so um, I have finished um, with making two candles. I thoroughly enjoyed doing them with you. I hope you did as well. Again. Um, 
I would love to have you in my next class. So making it's super fun because it's super creative. You have different things that you can add to your can um, soaps to make it unique and personalized and your and all yours. And you just need a microwave and handy dandy um, with your kit. Um, so any other questions? All right. Oh, thank you, Patty. You made my day. Um, Y'all, this was my first class. So if you liked it, um, let Michaels know um, so I can come again. Um, and also in our chat, let us know as well. Thank you guys so much. I look forward to seeing you again and hopefully helping you make more candles and soaps and other things that we have on the agenda. Bye.